All right, good evening traders. It's 4 o'clock. It is September 13th. We're going to do the market wrap up. And let's get some look at some charts. So here's the SPY on a daily chart. Pull that up. So here's the price action. Kind of a pause day. Um, still a lower high, lower low. Almost came down and challenged this lower anchored VWAP. Got close, but not no cigar there. Uh, closing up over the upper anchored VWAP. Good sign on for that. Uh, here's the price action for today. And uh, closing up over the midpoint. That is a very good sign. So we'll see what uh, uh, how our MMRP is going to play out. Because we've got a igniting candle. It's on a three-day chart. Pause candle. The check of support, first price advancement candle, and here is the second price advancement candle. Uh, they're going to need to get up over this 448.55 to make things happen. Uh, if they break below the low of this, then the pattern is broken. So there's SPY on the three-day chart. In a triangle, if you look at it on the daily chart, We've got higher lows, higher highs, another higher low. Uh, maybe another higher low right here. We'll see what happens. That's the SPY. So the bulls have to uh, take out this downtrend and then this high. And then start working on this high up here. Okay, the bears have to take out this low. Close candles underneath the lowered anchored VWAP. And take out this uptrend that the bulls have going on so that's the spy let's go look at qqq here's qqq uh doing a little bit better than spy but you know here's uh lower high lower low on qqq uh notice price action the three ema and the eight ema all closing up over our 17 ema trend indicator so that is a good sign right there. Bulls have to break this downtrend, take out this high, and then start working on these highs over here. Bears have to take out this uptrend and this low, and then start working on these two lows. So there's QQQ uh, in a triangle. Eventually, one of these uh, two uh, trend lines is going to win out future price action. So there's QQQ. Let's look at FNGU. FNGU putting in a lower low and a lower high. Still in a daily uptrend. We've got a higher low here, a higher high, another higher low. Not quite the higher high, so the bulls uh, still got some work to do to produce that next higher high. Now if we look at this, this is our neckline. After producing the higher high, bulls need to break this neckline or at least get up underneath it and start grinding uh, to uh, wear away the supply overhead. So that's FNGU right there. Now, if you look at that, that closed all three, the eight, the three, and the price action all closing over our trend indicator. Uh, that's a bullish sign right there. So we'll see how things play out for that tomorrow. Um, let's take a look at IWM. So here's IWM, and we've got a lower high and a lower low, and everything is closing. Underneath this base here, not a good sign for IWM uh, breaking down here. So it's possible it wants to come down here and visit this lower trend line right here. So uh, working on a head and shoulders here. Here's the head. Left shoulder, right shoulder, got a neckline here that possibly could be broken soon. We'll see what happens. But you can see all three, price action, the three and the eight, all underneath the trend indicator. Uh, IWM almost in a daily downtrend. We've got the lower high. Haven't quite established the lower low yet. So far, we're just equal lows at this time. So there's IWM. So that's sitting on support. Not sure if we're going to get a bounce on this tomorrow 
or not. FOMC came out today, made a statement at two, and the market rolled over but recovered more than 51% of it. So not sure what's going on there. Looks like the bulls said it's not happening this week. Um, CPI data came out this morning and uh, the market seemed to uh, turn into a bull flag So for, for the most part of the day. So not sure what's going on there. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Only time will tell. We've got a couple more days left of this week. Here's our IWM. Now let's take a look at Diamond Dow. Here's Diamond Dow. Diamond Dow putting in a lower high and a lower low. Uh, just stuck in this hourly uptrend at this time. I'm not even sure if it's going to be able to hold that hourly uptrend. So we got a red trend indicator ball on Diamond Dow. Uh, stuck in this triangle right here. Um, bulls need to uh, take out this downtrend line that the bears have going. And the bears need to take out this uptrend line that the bulls have going on. So far we've got a higher low. And we've got a lower high. So here's our highs up here. Lower high. Here's our low right here. It is a higher low. And yet again another higher low. So we've got a higher low and a lower high. So eventually, one of these two trend lines should dominate the future price action. We'll see. This is Diamond Dow and uh, just having a, having a, just doing some consolidation throughout here. So now let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar continues to grind higher and hold. The dollar is strong. 104.76 that's not good for our markets. So you can see there that's going to make our, the our cost of our goods and services more expensive in the global economy. And that'll make us less competitive. So that's not good for our markets when we're less competitive. Okay, now uh, earnings calendar tomorrow. Nothing's really happening today. Tomorrow, Adobe reports after the close. And for the economic calendar, tomorrow morning, jobless claims, uh, PPI final demand. So maybe they are going to revise the PPI number. And then we've got, that's the producer price index. Then we've got retail sales at 830. Business inventories at 10 and natural gas report at 1030. So now we'll take a look at a few other things. Let's go look at our T2122. Here's T2122 moving from the midpoint into the chop zone, into the sell zone, back into the chop zone, and just more selling going on here in T2122. T2123, you can see right here, just selling all day long. T2123 three bar, still underneath the trendicator, just selling here. We've got space between trendicator and price action. Uh, we've broken through the rising 200. That should have held us up for a little while. They just sliced right through it like hot knife through butter. So here is the support line. You can see they just grind right through that. It's like hitting a speed bump in the school zone doing 10. You just roll right over it. Now let's go look at our FNGU indicator. So here's the indicator for FNGU. It's nothing but our 17 EMA trend decator put on a 15 minute bar chart. And you can see it was nothing but chop, chop, chop all day long. Green, red, green, red, green, and more red. So good news. They closed up over the flat 200. That's a good sign. And we are still in this uptrend. So we'll see what happens. Price is consolidating here. Uh, moving towards the upside. So we'll see what happens. This is our neckline. Price needs to get up here, challenge these highs, and take out this neckline, or at least start working on it in some form or fashion or another. So let's go back to our markets, take a look at USO. Oil was bullish again today with higher highs and higher low. USO oil, crude oil doing very well here. UNG got a little lift today with a higher low, equal high, so still moving up. Look at the bodies of the candles. They are moving up at this time. But if you look at FNGU, it's still stuck in this big bear flag channel. 
between six dollars and eight dollars so there's ung take a look at silver there's silver consolidating right here going from this bear downtrend to this bull uptrend so here we are hitting the bull uptrend up to the bear downtrend and then back to the bull uptrend and just consolidating back and forth between these two trend lines eventually one of these will probably win out the future price action right now silver in a daily downtrend with lower highs no lower lows yet just equal lows just kind of putting in the channel right there gld doing kind of the same thing it's in a consolidation big bull flag consolidating over 175 you can see 175 support as it comes down hits it and bounces comes back hits it again bounces up nothing but lower high so far so we have a downtrend bulls need to break this downtrend bears need to break this support area right here at 175 so there's the gld <clears throat> now let's take a look at semiconductors so here's SMH. Thought SMH looked better than that yesterday. Maybe I'm thinking of some. Oh, I'm thinking of the financials. Okay, so here's SMH uh, breaking the uptrend here, closing candles below the uptrend. And SMH puts in a daily candle that is uh, kind of equal low, equal high. So nothing really bad. The only thing uh, negative is underneath this uptrend. The other thing. All three, the 3 EMA, the 8 EMA, and the price action, all closing underneath this 17 EMA trend indicator. All in all, this is a sloppy bull flag just consolidating here, and it may consolidate for another month. As long as it stays over this range here, it's stuck between 145 and 160 up here. So it can continue like that, just like the uh, UNG just channeled out to the right for about eight months and that wouldn't bother me at all if SMH just kind of held it up here in this bull flag the longer this is the better the breakout when it does finally break out so there's SMH XLF was really looking good yesterday okay so here's XLF uh, this is yesterday's candle I say it looks good because it broke up through the downtrend line and here we are closing a full candle over the downtrend line. That's a good sign. All right. Notice all three price action, the three, the eight, all over our trendicator, making the ball green. That's a good sign. That's bullish. It looks like the bull's uptrend line may hold price action. We'll see. It looks like they're breaking the bear's downtrend line right there. And if we look at it from the high to the low, here's the bulls pushing. This is the pullback, pushing the price action up over the midpoint. Really good sign to be bouncing off the midpoint and start attacking this upper third area right up here. Eventually, they will be knocking on the door of quadrant four. So really good sign for XLF. Nice recovery there. So XLF looking a little bit strong at this time. Now, if we just measure out this pullback here, which we probably should do, uh, here we are closing a candle price over the midpoint. Very good. Uh, that's a good sign for the financials. And we need those. Uh, you're going to need financials anytime you're going to have a robust market rally. You're going to need financials. And you're going to need tech, and it helps if you have transports. But there we are, XLF, doing the right stuff. So let's go look at the transports. All right, so here's the transports. Yesterday's candle was, as you can see, higher volatility with an equal high and a lower low. Today's candle is a lower high and a lower low and just kind of stuck right at the midpoint there. All right, you can see here's the move up, and then here's the move back. We have a lower low and a lower high. So IYT in a downtrend. This is the downtrend line. No triangle to speak of right here. So there's our uptrend ended, and now we got a downtrend back to the midpoint. Now it'll be nice if IYT can hold the midpoint, produce the higher low, and start attacking this high. 
So there's IYT. That's our transports. So I'm going to take questions in the room. And I want to thank everybody out there in YouTube land. Thanks for uh, listening to me and giving me the time. Please smash the like button and the subscribe button if you're there. We are having a trial special going on right now. If you want to be a part of the BYOB trading room, you can subscribe and you can pick up the link in the description. You can subscribe for $24.50. Don't forget to use your promo code. And I will talk to you all tomorrow at 8 a.m.